This video will help you understand the difference between a good AI website and a bad AI website. What is an AI website? Any website that uses artificial intelligence like ChatGPT to create content or at least help in that process. Have you heard of the term information gain? This is the difference. Let's talk about information gain, SEO, niche websites, all of these things, because I think this can help you in a big way. So this video here was spurred on by a conversation between me and Tony Hill. Tony Hill, right here, he has 8 million visitors to his website per month, one website, all right? So a conversation between me and him came to this right here, information gain and SEO. He was talking about this. I'm like, man, can I use this in a video? He's like, sure. Just talk to high level stuff and that's what we're going to do. Information gain and SEO, what it is and why it matters. So look, this is a search engine land article posted July 25th. But there's something interesting here because Google, the patent that this is all around, they released this thing right here, this big old patent, which we'll dive into June 7th you know, over a year ago. And now we see the Google helpful content update. And I think this kind of helps them identify good websites and bad websites. So before we go on, I need to tell you about this cohort, this mastermind cohort. It's a maximum of 20 people. Me and Tony Hill are putting together. So it's going to be people that have proven success in SEO. It's a very small forum. So if you're interested in this, I'll have a link in the description. Now this bit will blow your mind if you get your thinking cap on. So this is the abstract of the patent filed last year. Based on the information scores of a set of documents, let's read it again. Based on the information scores of a set of documents, the documents can be provided to the user in a manner that reflects the likely information gain that can be attained by the user if the user were to view the documents. In other words, well, let's not even go there. Let's keep looking at this document. If you don't listen to anything else in this video, just, just rewind this next part like 20 times. So step one, identify a first set of documents that share a topic provided by a user and have been viewed by the user. So they land on a page in Google. Now Google knows all the related pages to that that they could also serve the user, right? Identify a second set of documents that also share the topic that have not been viewed by the user, right? We just said that. Determine an information gain score for each of the documents of the second set. Select a new document from the second set based on the information gain score and present information extracted from the selected new document to the user. Google is so freaking smart. It's kind of scary at times. Do you see what they're doing here? So to take it a step further, I asked Claude, explain to me how niche websites should consider this Google patent. So Claude is really good at a lot of data if you want to input, by the way. So it said, here's a few key points. The patent describes determinant information score for documents based on how much additional or novel information they contain compared to documents the users had already seen. That is the basis of everything here. People say you shouldn't just have long form content and that's true to a degree dependent upon the novel information it has, right? But for niche websites, this means focusing on creating high quality original content. Do you remember those videos I was doing like a month ago? I'll have a link in the description on those too. I'll have a thumbnail here. Those ones were talking about exactly this, right? Consider ways to leverage your expertise and authority. Look for gaps in the existing content landscape. Make sure your content stays up to date. Produce long form. It's telling us produce long form in-depth content like guides and reports. Listen, listen, a lot of what we hear of Q&A, question, answer type of SEO, I'm kind of thinking that kind of stuff, it, it might go by the wayside. Now, I think the best way to demonstrate this is through example, which is exactly what I'll do. This is Bonsai Mary. This is not a sophisticated website. It's an aged domain that I bought, been working on it real slowly and just seeing how it goes. And as you can see, it's doing okay, right? We are up at, you know, 184 clicks. Um, what is this? Oh, look at here. 20,000 subscribers on the channel. Thank you for that. That's awesome. And okay, this is where I want to talk about. So the custom article workflow. Let's say, let's say with Bonsai Mary, we want to talk about right here, philodendron species care guides. I know you've seen this. I've done a lot of videos on this, but this is the basis of what Google's talking about here. Philodendrons, whatever the heck this type of plant is, care guide. Every single care guide should have a defined thing it talks about. What makes an excellent care guide? You want to raise this plant, have it in your house? I mean, there kind of is a finite amount of things we can talk about, and maybe we should consider these things right here. 
right? Uh, the genus species, how to grow it, propagation tips, quick care guides. That's a comprehensive article. And all I did with this was I just put together a template and pushed it to um, Word Galaxy. Not hard at all, right? Here's my template. I just went through the competitors, like, what are you guys talking about collectively? What are you guys not talking about that I can make better? So I used ChatGBT, and then I just made a master thing right here, pushed it right here, boom, and all of a sudden we're getting traffic gain. Why? Because I think we're just answering what the users want better in one mega awesome article. So this is another website I have, How Widely Spoken, and as you can see, the chart kind of stinks. It's sideways. It's not a lot of traffic for what it should be, and why is that? Let's look in here. Let's go to P posts. Let's come to published. Let's come to view. All right, a recent post. I mean, it's a beautiful post. You got to be real. That's that's 100% AI. Um, really nice post. But this, what language do they speak in Croatia? What is the problem? What do you think is the problem here? Let's just scroll down. I'm just going to get your brain going. Like, it's a beautiful, beautiful article for what it is. But there's a problem here. There's a problem. It's a Q. A type of blog post, question, answer, question, answer. These type of things, it's hard to really get novel information. Novel information is new information that Google has never seen before. Now let's back up a second because I know there's tons of counter arguments to what I just said. I can see them. I still use QA type of blog posts, but they have to wrap into the greater synergy. The whole website has to be connected and I use QA blog posts just for that. But if your whole SEO strategy is based upon question, answer type of things, I, I think there's a better way. Comprehensive blog posts that can fold these QAs into it is much different than one-off QAs. And I use all of those strategies, by the way. But, but remember the Google patent? It goes deeper than all of this. So now we're in Google Search Console for this website here. I have a lot of different posts on what language do they speak in Croatia. I actually have every country represented. Um, but it's just a foundational layer. But nonetheless, I want to see how Google is perceiving it. So as you can see here, we started back here. Impressions are going up, but, you know, eh, eh, I'm not totally thrilled by it. But let's just look here. So what language do they speak in Singapore, Algeria? We could say, what uh, average position are we? You know, 20. We're not seeing huge gain. And why is that? Well, let's just go on a little thought experiment. What language do they speak in Croatia? Type it into Google. And as you can see, the first one up is uh, acorby.com. It's a blog. Sail Croatia. And then Wikipedia. I mean, how much more? Here's my question to you. How much more can we we give these people on what language is spoken in Croatia? You know, that's that's a it's they speak Croatian, all right. And then we can tell them about the history and all these type of things. That's great and all, but how much can we really benefit on these things? Opposed to opposed to this, philodendron micans variegated, right? If you were to let's just go here, philodendron micans var variegated care guide, right? Boom, let's go here. Boom, care guide, care guide. It's a low volume situation but let's look at the competition right right here number one search result let's look here all right we're going to the headers come on now we're going here headers i mean they did a pretty darn good job actually i was gonna i just kind of ate my lunch and there's no wonder why they are number one but the point is a care guide gives you opportunity to really drive into the situation where a Q and A is very top level. Anything below the top level answer up here is all supplementary information that should be purposed to internally link throughout the rest of the website. Now come in full circle, right? Information gain in SEO. Do you see how this connects? Do you even have an opportunity to present information gain in the specific things you're talking about? If not, you may have a problem, right? So scrolling down, I mean, they talk about some good things. I'll have this uh, in the link in the description. But listen, identify what type of posts can you provide novel information? And there's two ways, two ways to provide novel information. Number one, you extract all the information from the world and put it into just one place. Therefore, you know, user A doesn't have to explore the web to get all the things. Now you have to be careful of cannibalization. The second way is to provide new data that Google has never seen before. If you can combine those two things, then you're cooking with fire. Now, if you're still listening after all of this, 
Remember I said I'm putting on with Tony Hill this Maverick Mastermind. It's very, very small. It's only 20 people, right? 20 people plus two, me and Tony. And listen, there may be more opportunity in the future. It's going to be a very small class class, right? Cohort, whatever you want to call it. So if you're interested, click the uh, link in the description. If the course is closed, if the cohort is closed, rather, that's okay. You can still input your information for maybe future opportunities.